Hello there. In this video, I'm going to talk about the characteristic equation. And we're going to use this in order to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation. More generally, it's used in order to solve second order linear ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients. And I know that's a fairly serious mouthful, but the bottom line here is that it, the time independent Schrodinger equation is of that form. And what's great is that solving such equations really is really simple and basically boils down to solving a quadratic equation. If you're interested in solving differential equations more generally, I suggest you go to my website universityphysicstutorials.com where I've done a fairly detailed playlist on differential equations, specifically covering things like the characteristic equation, Laplace's equation, the method of Frobenius, and I even solved for the wave functions of the hydrogen atom. But I digress. So let's begin. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to give you the learning points or the bottom line up front at the start. So that'll tell you whether this video is for you, hopefully. So in the middle of your screen, we have a second order linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. And if you want to know exactly why it is like that or why it has such a long name, I refer you to my uh, differential equations playlist. The point here is we're talking about a function y, which is a function of x. So we have the zeroth derivative, the first derivative and the second derivative. And we have three coefficients a, b and c. Now, in order for us to use the characteristic equation, the coefficient a must always be equal to one. So that means if you want to use the characteristic equation and a is not equal to one, you must divide across by a. Now, this nomenclature here is, I think, very cumbersome. It's, it's, it's very clunky. So we're going to make some substitutions. And I'm sure you've seen this before. Instead of writing y of x like this, we're going to simply write y. We're going to use y prime for the first derivative and we're going to use y double prime for the second derivative. And this allows us to rewrite the equation here in the center of your screen, where of course a is going to be equal to one. And as I said, the time independent Schrodinger equation is of this form. So how do we solve it? Well, we solve what's known as the characteristic equation. And this is an equation in lambda and lambda basically is a placeholder for the solutions to the differential equation. And this characteristic equation is in fact a quadratic equation. And it is set up with the coefficients of our differential equation. So you take the coefficients a, b and c, of course, a should be equal to one. And then you take lambda as a placeholder for the solutions to your differential equation. Or since a is equal to one, we can leave that out. Now, I'm sure you know how to solve a quadratic equation. Very straightforward. We're going to have the solution here. So I'm going to say lambda plus minus is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac over twice a. But of course, a is equal to one. And this will allow us to calculate the solutions to our differential equation, our y of x. Now, there are three cases we need to consider, and they all boil down to whether or not b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero. So if it's less than zero, we're gonna have complex roots, and if it is uh, equal to zero or greater than zero, we're gonna have real roots. But suffice it to say for the moment that by solving this, the, the characteristic equation, which is a diff, uh, excuse me, a quadratic equation, when we get lambda, we will in effect have the solution y of x. But there is a bit of a subtlety that in order to get a solution to our differential equation, we, we have to have what are known as two particular solutions. And when you gather two particular solutions in what's known as a linear combination, you have a general solution. So the point here is that when you solve something like a differential equation, 
you're always seeking to get two solutions and we refer to those as particular solutions and I'm sure you'll spot that there are two solutions going to be here because we're going to have a lambda plus and a lambda minus because of the plus or minus here. So we're going to have two particular solutions and we take them in a linear combination and we're going to get the, uh, the general solution. But that's something we can talk about more later. So that's it. That's how we solve it. And what I'm going to do now is talk about the actual solution in a bit more detail.